In this video, we are going to do search. You will find this on page 5 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook Y equals MX plus C to success. Search. Now, this is just for enrichment. It's not in the syllabus or the curriculum, but you use it so many times in this AS level where they are asking you to express the final answer in the simplify search form. So that's why I was thinking the best is to know the rules because this is part of mathematics and that will actually just enrich your syllabus um, if I'm putting this in, in the textbook. So let's start. We have learned from indices that A, if it's, if it's for example, I must make it a little bit bigger, I can also not see there. So if it's 1 over n, then the n is on the outside and that 1 is on the inside. If it's 9 to a half, then it's the square root and that's 3. And if it's this, then it's the cube root and that's 3 over 5. These two numbers are rational numbers. That means they end. You can write it them as a vulgar fraction. On the other hand, numbers such as 3 to a half, okay, and 4 are irrational numbers. Because if you're going to press this on your calculator, you guys, the decimal places will just go on and on. Okay, so they don't stop. So you cannot write it as a vulgar fraction. So when we can't simplify a number to remove a square root or a cube root, for example, they are called search. In fact, search used to be another name for irrational, but is now used for a root that is irrational. Since this is a half and this is this, provided that y cannot be zero because it's undefined, we have the prop following property for search. Now, this is very important. a is bigger than zero and b is bigger than zero. Then you can write it separate, but you can write it, you can make one root and write both inside. Separate one root and divide both inside. So you can go to this side, but you can also go to this side. This side or go back. A search is said to be in its simplest form when it's expressed such that the integer under the root sign is as small as possible. And this is what they sometimes ask. And this is why I was putting it in the textbook. Now let's look at this kind of example. Express the following as search in the simplest form. Now, you can either, uh, and I'm going to show you another method also, you can think what times what is 50, and, and then you think of a square number. And that, what is the square number? The square number is 1, uh, it's going to be 4, it's going to be 9, uh, 4 times 4 is 16, 25. Okay, so basically I divide it and then I find. Another method which you can also do is um, sometimes, and I'm just going to do it with this one, if you take 50 and you start, you write it in prime factors. So you start 2 can go in 25 and then 5 can go in 5 and 5 can go in 1. So basically I can write, and I'm going to do it like here, I can write 2 times 5 to the power of 2. Then the 1 that's to the power of 2 can go out because you're going to say 2 divide 2. So that one goes out and that one stays inside. So that is one method, but this is the method where I then make use of the rule. And that is why I was doing this method here. So it's 25 times 2, but that can break up into the square root of 25 times the square root of 2, which will give them then 5 square root 2. And that is in the simplest form. The same here, uh, what, what of that square numbers? 16 can divide, so 16 times 5, I break it up, and I get 4 square root 5. Now, this is important. If n, for example, 5 is a rational number, so, uh, and a is not a rational number. So that, that part is rational, and that part is irrational. This part is rational, but this part is irrational. But then, as soon as I combine it, the result will be irrational. Did you see? So if I'm, if I'm taking this whole thing, then I will say 
that this is irrational due to that part in the root that makes the whole answer irrational. Not rational number, therefore an irrational number. Okay, I'm just going to give you two. This is just really to practice that rules a little bit. And, and we can do it without, but as soon as we struggle, then we can always bring prime factors in. So I think if you do number A and number D, I think that's enough. Again, try it on your own. And as soon as you are finished, stop the video. And as soon as you are finished, you can continue the video. Okay, let's start. Number A. Now, I think this one is very easy. I'm going to do it on the first. So if I say 20, now what can divide one? It's not about four. Oh, that's going to be. So I can say, if I say it's 4 times 5, and I want to use the rule. So it's 4 times square root 5, which then will be 2 and 5. And that will be my answer. And that's, they like to ask, especially in this level, express it in, in the simplest form. Then you must go for this. Okay, let's start with number D. Now, number D, I'm going to st start by saying, okay, it's 3 to 5 to a half. And that is going to be equals 3 to 5. Now, if I start dividing, and remember, what you can do this method, you take the square numbers. Okay, 1 will not work because that's going to stay the same. Uh, but 4, can 4 divide? No. Can 9 divide? 3 to 5 divide 9? And no, it's not... Uh, okay. Then can 16 divide? You can taste uh, 3 to 5 divide 16. No. Okay, but here it comes. If you say 3 to 5 divide 25, I'm getting 13. So it's going to be 25 times 13. Okay. And I'm um, about. Um, and then I break it up into 25 times square root 13, and that gives me 5 square root 13. That's the one method. But the other method that I also sometimes use is I take 3 to 5, and I break it up into prime um, factor. So I say 3 to 5, 3 to 5, can he divide by 2? No. Can he divide by 3? 7, 8, 9, 10? No. Can he divide by 5? Yes. Uh, so it's 5 and it goes 65. And then I divide 5 again and I get 13. And then 13 and 1. So the method that I do then, can I just show you? I go and I like to say then, okay, just get my pen correct. It's 5 to the power 2 times 13. And now, it's actually, then, then automatically you're going to see the 25. Do you see? Then you can still say 5 to times square root 13, and that will be 5 square root 13, which is exactly the same. So if you struggle to find that number, just break it up into prime factors, and then automatically you will see that number.